through the, through the campaign structure, of course. So now the question is, okay, so now what happens? Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge question. Um, we don't have much precedent of um, sitting presidents leading social movements. Um, you know, uh, uh, Roosevelt uh, took advantage of the labor movement, right? Um, but he didn't lead it. Right. Um, Reagan, um, you know, uh, drew on Falwell, and but those organizations had pre-existed his presidency, and, mm -hmm. and he didn't run them. Though, so arguably, if you trace his speech for Goldwater all the way back, you could argue that Reagan was part of the New Right movement. Well, he came out of the movement, yeah. but he didn't. He wasn't a movement. Lead, he wasn't an organizational leader. No. See, I, and I think that's a really no. I don't think piece. we've ever had anything like this. Well, one, yeah, I agree. And I, but now, one of the things though that happens is that when polit so so, and one reason is I think mm. that when um, when candidates for political when they win, they govern mm -hmm. and they bring all their best people into governance, uh, and that's kind of where the action is, and it makes a lot of sense given the fact that we don't have constituency parties in this country, and so mm -hmm. we have no ongoing mechanism of participation and accountability, unlike uh, uh, parties in England or... In well, once upon a time we, we did, but the, those but have been hollowed out. But even then, they, they, they didn't have the... the parliamentary system um, creates a different locus of political power. Yeah. That ours just it's just not there, mm -hmm. and so it, it it's it's much more like patchwork and and well you know uh, so so that's um, a problem. So but now when they lose, that's when they build organizations. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw it with Tom Hayden in California when he mm -hmm. moved for the Senate and uh, mm -hmm. became CED. Mm -hmm. uh, Howard Dean became Dean for America. Uh, you know Jesse. I, I, that's another story. I don't even <laughs> to go there, but um, so so here we have a guy who won. Yes. Uh, who was really propelled to that office? Or I want to. I don't want to say propelled. Supported through the creation of a movement. Right. And so now what? Well, uh, can he lead it from the presidency? Probably not. I mean, there's a lot of good reasons why that's problematic. Mm -hmm. Or why that would quickly turn into emails from Barack saying, "Please send a letter to X," which is just the old form of what we were talking about before mm -hmm. that politics is marketing. That's not yet. right. Um, so it could, you know, become a network of some kind. Mm -hmm. uh, it could become an organization. But if it became an organization, something like Campaign for New America or something like that. Mm -hmm then we have to really look at questions of finance and governance uh, as to how enable something like that to work. But, so, my but, but, well, let me just, yes, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. But there's a foundation out there that didn't mm -hmm. exist before. And, and it's not going to go away. I mean, in other words, there's a civic, there's a, there's a amount of, you know, my colleague here talks about social, Bob Putnam talks about social capital. Mm -hmm. there's, there's kind of civic capital that's been created here. And it's not going to disappear. Well, it, some of it can disappear if the people in place who have, you know, built these teams and, and acted as coordinators move on in their lives and, and so pieces break. Oh, the right? Connect, right, right. And so to the degree that there's, there's an effort to keep the connective tissue going, I mean, this is why people are asking what's going to happen to MIBO. Not that MIBO is the only way that people right. are connected to each other, but there's a great deal of lateral connection that's that's embedded in that now that the campaign didn't worry about that allowed people to do so it is useful mm -hmm. my bow isn't designed as the best organizing platform anybody could have created but right. it's it's got a lot of utility um, you have what 23,000 people who went through Camp Obama something like some that version. yeah yeah some version. Um, I mean those are you have your super volunteers you know you there, there's knowledge about where uh, the nodes are, right? Well, yes. Where does that all go? Well, if it is, if it's, I mean, to no, me, it I, feels I like this is the moment where I, I you don't, you you built this thing. Um, what would it be like to govern with that kind of capacity? Not let it go, you know, I, I, uh, fallow. I, I agree. I think. I mean, that's I think what's being debated right yeah. now. Yeah. 
And I mean, there's a team of organizers meeting in Chicago right now who mm -hmm. are working on this question. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, because, I mean, another important thing is the organizers who, who you know, the field directors, a lot of the organizers who built this thing. Yeah. Um, not all of them want to just go off and have jobs in Washington. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of them are committed to an organizing vision here, and they fought for it through the campaign. And then one reason why the campaign actually ultimately adopted much more of the organizing approach than it was inclined to at the very beginning. Well, so well one has to assume that, that Barack himself believes in this model based on his own experiences. Well, there's certainly, there's certainly a, a resonance there. Yeah. But, you know, New Hampshire was one of the worst marketing operations I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and he lost, and uh -huh. so we learned something from that. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it was sort of as stereotypically a marketing operation as New Hampshire, as, as um, South Carolina was an organizing Or operation. Iowa, for that matter. Right? Or yeah. Iowa. Yeah. And Iowa is an interesting, the caucuses are, are a very important, interesting dimension of this, too, because they, they force you to organize, even if mm -hmm. you don't believe in organizing. You have to, otherwise you're screwed. Mm -hmm. And so you 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 arrive. It's interesting. You arrive at a lot of organizing elements tactically, mm. uh, but not necessarily because your desire is to, you know, create grassroots democratic organizations. It's just a necessity. Yeah. Which I love about the caucuses. That's mm -hmm. why I think they're great mm -hmm. because they, mm -hmm. they force that kind of skill development, leadership development. So, but. But the so folks meeting in Chicago uh, mm -hmm. right now, um, trying to come up with some proposals. Who? Um, well, their leadership from the organizing side. Now, why is and this a closed process? Well, it's a good question. I don't know. I mean, it ought to be an open process, and I think that's been one of the challenges with the campaign all along. Mm. So, uh, but you know, it's only as closed as we let it be. I mean, you know. Uh, I think it's important to sort of, you know, create the public space for this kind of discussion. Mm -hmm. See, people are also used to thinking about um, a lot of groups and organizations around sort of saying, who's going to get the list? Who's going to get the list? Because they sort of think of, um, you know, uh, 1.5 million names or whatever it is. Yeah. And who's going to get it? But now you can transfer a list, but you can't transfer people that way. Right. And that's what's out there is people. So um, I think that, you know, over the next few, I don't know, weeks, months, mm -hmm. there's going to be some working through this. Mm -hmm. It is very important what Obama decides. Mm -hmm. and, um, and whether to try to support some sort of a, of a of an organized effort that's rooted in the campaign, right, or not? 